Implementing a proper self-compassion plan means it should be crafted specifically for you and your short-term and long-term goals. It requires understanding who you are and what you want from life and taking consistent daily action with mindfulness, momentum, and determination. I'll tell you how to do that on today's Coffee with Colleen. If this is your first time listening to Coffee with Colleen, welcome. My name is Colleen Hammond. I'm a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel, former network news anchor, former Miss Michigan, and I've combined decades of study and life experience, and I'm now an executive coach. I work with top performers and teach science-backed resilience training. We transform leaders and top performers by decreasing stress, but at the same time, increasing energy, flow, and productivity. A small part of what I do is help my clients discover how to be more self-compassionate, and that's what I'm sharing in this series on the podcast right now. Implementing and following a self-compassion routine sounds easy, but it's easier said than done. Because it's easy to give in to temptations or be too involved in your work to pay attention to all the key areas of your life. Instead of expecting yourself to be healthy and add self-compassion into it, you need to develop a comprehensive plan. Then even when you have a bad day, you just pick yourself up and keep moving forward to your best self and your best life. So here are the four steps I teach my clients in helping them to build a personal self-compassion plan. Step number one is always to evaluate all the areas of your life. So we want to figure out where you are now regarding your level of self-compassion that you provide yourself directly, while also determining what triggers your anxiety or your stress to start eliminating or healthily dealing with the stressors. For example, if you feel anxious trying to get the children and yourself ready for the day in the morning, how can you make this reality easier? It's not going to change. Got to get up every morning and get everybody ready. So maybe what you can do is get the clothing ready the night before. Maybe working from home is an option for you. Maybe homeschooling might be the answer for you. So evaluate all the areas of your life to find out where your energy leaks are, those stressors, and learn how to plug those leaks. I have another webinar coming up where we'll be discussing that in in detail. Step number two, develop short-term and long-term goals. Starting with a short-term goal of just making your mornings less stressful, write out your goal for that. So for example, your goal might be to eliminate rushing around or hurrying in the morning because you can set your morning up the night before. Plan ahead. Then that long-term goal might be to stop having to get up so early in the morning because you can radically change your life. Again, SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bone. No goal is going to be too hard to help you make your life better. Step three, action. You got to do stuff and then monitor your results. So once you design the steps to take, you want to take to reach your goal, for example, this morning routine, you schedule it out, do it for a week, and then monitor the results of your actions. You want to also create a way to track and monitor your results. Maybe you have an accountability partner. Maybe you have graphs or charts. Maybe you keep track through a small, a smartphone rather app. Whatever you're doing, do it for a week and then look back on the week. How did it work? What can be changed? Monitor your results and adjust accordingly. Step four, practice, update, and also take risks. So when you first seek to change how you're living your life, It's not going to come easy. It's not an overnight cure to whatever your challenges are. Instead, you need to set short-term and long-term goals so you can experience that success. Remember, make tiny changes, which we've talked about before, so I'm not going to repeat all of that here. Tiny changes. Don't try to overturn everything all at once. Small changes and then monitor them and adjust accordingly. Just keep practicing this goal setting 
action taking and monitoring your results. And don't be afraid to take a few calculated risks, depending on what area of your life that you're making these adjustments in. Just use these steps as a blueprint to develop your comprehensive self-compassion plan. It's important to note that your strategy is personal to you and only do. Don't add something to your routine that you know is going to make you uncomfortable in the long run or because you believe that's what you think others want from you. There's other podcasts I've done on boundaries. The key is to find your happiness and your health by taking the right steps every day. I hope you enjoyed this brief episode of Coffee with Colleen. Tell some people about this episode or this series that we're doing on self-compassion. Just like to spread encouragement and positivity, especially during these times, right? So just be the leader amongst your friends of encouragement and positivity. Hit the share button, pick one, two, or three people you'd like to help, and take a screenshot and share that screenshot on social media. Don't forget to tag me at hashtag Coffee with Colleen and help share the positivity. And if you'd like to help this podcast grow, by the way, please rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, because believe it or not, that really does help. And I read all the reviews too. Give us five stars, please cheer us on and leave a review. And my last thought for today is this. Please remember, you are stronger than you think. The future holds amazing things for you. And today is going to be a great day.